we've heard a ton about launch angle as of late. The truth is launch angle is a guess, meaning hitters can't really control it. Even um, Josh, who's telling us to say no to ground balls, um, he can't completely control that because he's still at about 37% ground balls, even if, if that really is the goal. What I think he's really trying to say, though, is guys, stop teaching hitters to swing down on the ball in order to create ground balls. I think that's really what he's trying to say. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but at the end of the day, there's no such thing as eliminating ground balls. Every player has ground balls. They may limit it slightly, but somewhere around 40, 40, 20 is where that's going to end up. That's just about league average, and there are some some guys that are leaning one way or the other. Josh, for example, is at about 43% fly balls and about 37% ground balls, which is great. That means that he's hitting the ball um, in the air more often and line drives more often. He's also at about 110 miles an hour of exit speed with his top out. That means he can hit the ball at 80% of his max, roughly, and end up with 91 or 92 miles an hour, which is just about the minimum to hit it out. If you are not at that point where you can miss hit the ball and hit it out, then hitting every ball in the air is not for you. We'll, we'll cover a little bit of that in, in a bit. So no matter how you swing the bat, whether it's down a little bit, whether it's flat, whether it's up slightly, whether it's up big time, no matter how you swing the bat, the 40-40-20 rule is going to apply. So let's assume for a second that we're going to swing slightly up. So for us to hit it perfect, which is one of the three possibilities, we hit it at that same trajectory. If we miss just a little bit below center, then we hit some type of a fly ball. A little more below center, obviously, a little more of a pop-up. So if we hit above the center, then we end up with some type of ground ball. Now, no matter what happens, we're always going to have the misses that go up at about 40%, about 40% that we miss that are heading in that direction. But when you start to miss the ball further away from that line, that's when you start to have lower exit velocities. So the guys that are training to hit the ball more severely up, they're still going to have the same exact scenario. When they hit it perfect, it's going to go up. That's great. But when they miss hit it slightly, it's going to be a fly ball that's not really something that's going to end up as a hit. And when they miss this, they're going to end up topping it more. Josh's ground ball, average exit velocity somewhere around 83 miles an hour. Most of the guys that have severe uppercuts, the Conforto, the guys in those, those range are somewhere around 80 miles an hour of exit velocity when they actually do hit a ground ball. And they will hit ground balls. Because no matter what you do, no matter how good you are, you're going to miss hit the ball. The reason guys are having so much success right now with this concept is because pitchers at a record pace are throwing pitches down at the bottom of the zone. As long as that's the case, this severe or slightly severe uppercut is going to have really great results. Because now you're in the same line that the pitch line is. So you, you're, you actually have improved your odds. The second, however, that changes and guys start throwing the ball at the top part of the strike zone. We saw it with um, Aaron Judge last night against um, Craig Kimbrell. When you're swinging severely up at a ball that's being thrown more flat, you only have one point of contact. And the 40-40-20 rule is still going to apply, but now you're going to do a lot of that, a lot of that, and occasionally that. And that's just the way it goes. And, and this is only going to happen just really rarely. So let's take a look at Josh's um, trajectories. Now, no matter where you draw the line, StatCast draws the line right here, and everything below that is a ground ball. If, if we do that, then Josh is at about 37%, about 43% of the balls that are fly balls, and then somewhere around 18% of the balls that are right along that line. Okay, But no matter where we draw that line, we're never going to get more than, than some baseballs that are exactly in that line. So we're always going to have that degree of, of mishit. It's, it's just the way it goes. But the higher you make that line go, the higher you raise your trajectory, the uglier your 40% and 40% are going to be. It's just that simple. So no matter how you look at it, 
that's the way it's always going to be. Now, if Josh is really going to say no to ground balls, we got to get rid of those six hits that are down here that are ground balls. So he's really only hitting 206 instead of 300 or right at it. Um, I know that's kind of a joke, but when you keep your ground balls, when your goal is to hit it about here and you miss your 40% there and there, you're going to end up having a, a, a really high exit velocity on the balls that you are hitting on the ground. So even though that's not the, the ideal thing to have happen, um, hitting the ball down here at, at that degree, when you miss hit the ball and you're at 89, 90, 94, 97, those balls have a better chance of being hits. Unless you are one of the guys that are just um, trying to hit the ball on the ground. But he's going to hit it at 80% out of the yard. D. Gordon and the Youth of America are not going to miss hit the ball at 80% and hit it out of the yard. That's, that's just not normal for most youth players. So the key element is trying to figure out where to set the ideal swing line. For D. Gordon, it's probably somewhere around there where he wants to hit line drives. And if he misses it a little bit, then he's still in really good shape one way or the other. And you can see the bulk of his hits are in that little cone shape that are within that perfect trajectory that he's set for himself. So at the end of the day, that's really what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to teach guys to swing up, to hit the ball perfect up there, number one, you don't want it to hit to hit it perfect because it has less spin. When you hit it exactly on the line, it has a tendency to knuckle, and that ball's not going to carry at quite as much. You can find out all about that in the Hitting as a Guess DVD. When we introduced this way back in 2001, um, we Jay was gracious enough. Jay Bell was a 17-year major leaguer and a two-time All-Star to help us uh, put this video together. And it's basically was the very first data-driven hitting metrics that were introduced to the hitting world. We introduced swing movement training, plyometric-based hitting training. We used core boards, balance beams, the three bat weight concept. We were the first to do that. The heavy ball basketballs getting exit velocities off of that we were the first to use the resistance belt at least from a perspective of being out in the public we were the first to introduce launch angle and exit velocity as the key metrics the the concept behind the three bat weight system that we developed was the underload overload theory to try to help increase bat speed but it was also as an inner training mechanism because if you're swinging at a, a pitch at a certain pitch speed with three different weights you're teaching your body how to time it in three different ways so you're realistically training your body how to measure timing um, the basic concept of the traject angle was a rating system that we used to look at launch angle a three was a missile or hard fly ball Four was a really hard fly ball, equivalent to today's barrels. Five was a straight line drive. And the concept was we were trying to rate the trajectory, knowing that every time it got more than 10 degrees away from that perfect line, it was going to lose exit velocity. And the, more, the higher, further away from that line it got, the more exit velocity it lost off the tee. So we assumed that same thing was true. And as it turns out later, that's exactly right. So even though we had caveman tools, we actually introduced the world to the basic concept of data-driven hitting metrics.